that out. I'm going to really flatten it. Every odd power root, 3, 5, 7, 9, will look something like this. It'll have this negative version as well, because you can plug in negatives to it. So it'll be, a, it'll be some sort of an S curve. Now, the only th thing we got to talk about is that the shifting still works. On your homework, it's going to ask you to make tables for all this stuff. I really don't care about that. If you want to make tables, great. But do you, do you understand the shapes of these guys? If you understand the shapes, you can manipulate them by shifting them around. Now, for a fifth root or a fourth root, you might want to draw a table once just to kind of see the values and how it looks. Okay, draw, draw it one time, and then if it asks you to shift it, go ahead and shift it. So since we, we, just, graphed our, or we just graphed some of those things on your test, if I ask you to do f of x equals square root of x plus 1, like this, where it's inside of the radical, you should be able to tell me what type of a shift that is. Is that a shift up, down, left, or right? Firstly, let's determine whether it's a vertical or a horizontal shift. Now you tell me, is this plus 1 within the function or after the function? Within. It's within. So is it a horizontal or a vertical shift? Horizontal. Remember, after, after would have been up or down. Okay. This is within the square root. That's why this little tail here is covering that plus one. This is within the square root. So this is going to be a shift either left or right. Remember my original graph looks like this. My original graph looks like that. What did the plus one do if it's inside of your function? Was that a shift to the right or a shift to the left? Which one was that? Left. 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 That's right. That's correct. That's correct. So this is a shift to the left. If it's inside, it was horizontal, and it was kind of backwards of what your head wanted to say. This was left one. So here we say, oh, okay, let's move our vertex one spot, redraw our graph. We can shift these graphs around, just like we did before. Are you okay with this? Okay, let's try one more. Let's do g of x. <coughs> Cube root of x plus 2. Cube root of x plus 2. Of course, you need to know what the shape of the graph looks like, which is why I'm going to have you draw at least one graph using a table for like a fourth root and a fifth root. But then after that, you can just shift them around. That's fine. What's this graph look like? Does it look exactly like this? No. No, it's also it's got that other side to it. So the original one... Would look like that. Something like that. Can you tell me what this plus 2 does? Is the plus 2 within the function or after the function? So is it a horizontal shift or a vertical shift? Definitely. And is it going to go up or down? So this says you're going to take your graph, just move it up two spots. If we move it up two spots, we're going to redraw the same exact thing. And that's my new function. We can shift these things all over the place. We can do combinations as well. We can do something within the function and something after the function. We could even reflect it with a negative up front that would flip these things upside down. If you flip this upside down, notice you're going to get a Z curve instead of an S curve. You with me on this, ladies and gentlemen? Now we understood what we talked about today. Good. Well, that wraps up our section 10.1.